transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. gentlemen that's right this is another episode of coffee and contemplation i happen to be your host old heart or you can call me jared just depends honestly if you're listening it gets confusing at times if you're not listening then you have no idea what i'm talking about who i am or where you are who am i uh either way Welcome to Coffee and Contemplation, an Old Heart Radio podcast. Uh, We are, as always, swinging for the fences, throwing podcasts out there. If you uh, notice, we have an Old Heart Instagram, Old Heart Radio on Instagram, and Old Heart in Space on Twitter. Go follow us for updates on all of our shows regularly, or as regularly as we can get them. Either way, thank you for being here. You are welcome. I am great. (laughs) I think that's a good flow of statements, right? Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. I'm great. How how are you? It doesn't matter. It's not like anybody's here answering. I'm literally recording a podcast into a microphone in my robe. The beauty of running your own morning podcast, dear listener, if you are out there, is that you can do it in the comfort of your own robe and bong. I mean, own robe and coffee cup. Either way, so this is the first Coffee and Contemplation episode of October 2019, and I I just got to say this right now. I love October. My birthday's in October, so it's October 19th. I'm a little, I'm maybe a little biased on that, but I love October. Uh, It's just, it always gets me. Like, fall starts kicking in, and it's gorgeous out, and then things start getting spooky. Maybe not. Maybe not necessarily spooky, but at least I try to make them spooky. I really need to get to decorate my the the house with uh, Halloween decorations. But first today, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One, I just was reading this Wikipedia article called "The Bloody Benders," and it is uh, listed under one of the serial killers of the United States. I don't know if you're like me, dear listener, but for some reason I find myself weirdly fascinated with serial killers. Like, not weirdly fascinated with serial killers. That makes me sound like a creep. I'm just, I'm just interested in serial killers. Like, what is the mindset there? Like, what is the mytho? Like, what is going on with a fucking serial killer? That's just kind of it. It's not necessarily, and I hate all this sounds bad. It's not necessarily about the victims. It's just sort of like, what the fuck is up with that person? Like, why would they perpetrate these things? You know, that, like, that's kind of the most fascinating thing about it. Either way, so I found this thing called the Bloody Benders, and it is about a family of motherfucking, motherfucking killers. killers, okay? And they were uh, they operated from about 1869 to 1872. They have about 11 known, they have about 11 known victims, uh, probably more. A lot of these, and that's the thing, like, a lot of these serial killers, killers that I've found... They, uh, you know, they read about that I found. I say make it like a personal thing. Like, I found these people. Uh, a lot of these serial killers that you read about, they have, like, their, their, their definite victims. And then they have a, a listing of, like, potential victims. And there's a lot, a lot, some of them have a lot more potential victims, which is kind of even more scary. It's like they got away with, they got, they maybe got caught, like slipped up somehow in this one, but they got away with a lot, which is kind of fucking crazy. Uh, but the bloody benders were a family, you know, the family that kills together, uh, gets chills together. I don't know. I I don't fucking know, man. Um, but the bloody benders were a family of, of, uh, serial killers who lived in Labette County, Kansas in the 1800s. The family consisted of John Bender, his wife Elvira Bender, son John Jr., and daughter Kate. 
Oh man, I wonder if I wonder if that had any if if this person had any inspiration on the character Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Uh, while Bender mythology holds that John Jr. and Kate were brother and sister, ooh, uh, contemporary newspapers report that several of the Bender's neighbors had stated that they claimed to be married, possibly a common law marriage. Motherfucking killer. Very strange. Very strange. Um, so, following the American Civil War, the U.S. government moved... Uh, The natives from Labette County, Kansas, to a different territory located in Oklahoma. The newly vacant land was then... The newly stolen land, let's just say that. The newly stolen land was then made available to white homesteaders. In October 1870, five families of people moved over to the Labette County... uh, To Osage in, in northwestern Labette County. There... The deed started happening, I believe. The Bender family itself uh, ended up moving there when, 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 when? They, wait, they moved on 160 acres. Shit. Shout outs. Shout outs to Yellow T. Shout outs to Evil L. Shout outs to Cat, my fellow host, Castle Roll. Shout outs to Harrison Hannon. Shout outs to uh, Moon Moon. Shout outs to uh, Uncaged and anybody listening out there. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect shout out section. Um, so, the Bender family. John Bender Sr. was around 60 years old, spoke very little English. Uh, Elvira Bender was around 55 and was apparently so unfriendly that the neighbors took to calling her the fucking she devil. All right. Uh,. Apparently, Kate's popularity became a large attraction for the Benders Inn because she was a uh, she did seances and gave lectures on spiritualism. Apparently, <laughs> she was a self-proclaimed healer and psychic. She distributed flyers advertising her supernatural powers and her ability to cure illnesses. I wish people would still just actually here in Olympia, people do kind of do that. <laughs> like no joke, it's 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 very interesting. Sort of. Uh, all right, so let's just get into some of the deaths. In May 1871, the body of a man named Jones, who had his skull crushed and his throat slit, was discovered in Drum Creek. The owner of Drum Creek found was originally suspected of this fucking killing, uh, but he actually wasn't. So it was actually one of the Bender family people. But he again found this person with his skull crushed and throat in a throat cut. Throat. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. So weird. So weird when you're recording podcasts in the morning. Uh, either way, uh, killing the, the Bender family killing method was kind of strange, it seemed like. Um, it is it is thought that the, when a guest would stay at the Bender's bed and breakfast, the, in, the hosts would give the guests the seat of honor at the table, which was positioned over a trap door that led into the cellar, which is some creepy shit. Uh, with the victim's back turned to the curtain, Kate would distract the guests, while then John Bender or his son would come from behind the curtain and strike the guest on the fucking skull with a hammer. The victim's throat would be slit (laughs) by one of the women to ensure that death happened, and then the body was then dropped to the trap door. Like, you ever seen, uh... That Sweeney Todd movie when uh, they're just like they're making pies out of fucking people and they're like, just dropping body after body after body into the fucking like on the floor. It's like that. It's terrible, terrible. And these sound effects on a podcast are even more terrible. I understand that, but you're here listening. <laughs> <laughs> So they definitely like they doubled down. They smashed the dude. They domed the dude with a hammer. They slit his. They slit the people's throat. Uh, Jeez. Although some of the victims had been quite wealthy, others had been carrying little of little value, and so it was just kind of hit or miss, man. They they didn't really like. They were. I feel like they were doing it mostly for the thrills and chills of it, which is fucking insane. Uh, Testimony from people who had stayed at the inn and managed to escape before they were killed appeared to support. The, the the execution method so it was kind of like whoa man like I saw like there, there was this I was just reading this there is 
uh, a testimony by two men, two men who had traveled to the inn to experience Kate Bender's psychic powers, stayed for dinner, but refused to sit at the table, instead preferring to eat their meal in the main shop. Kate then became abusive towards them, and a while later, the two the two Bender guys, the two Bender men, John and John, emerged from the behind the cloth curtain. Because they, they were just hanging there. They were waiting to dome somebody. Like, they were, like... Like, they were waiting to dome somebody. The people didn't take the bait that Kate was laying out. So she's like, ah, fuck you, you fucking hacks. And then, like, and then the two, like, John Johns from, from, from just kind of like come out from behind the curtain with their hammer in hand or something. Like, ah, darn, we're not getting this one. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> they're just like, so, like, sometimes it's like, if it worked out, it worked out. If it didn't, they're just like, kind of admit it. Like, what were you doing back there, John? Oh, uh, just, uh, fixing the. The curtain with my hammer. What the fuck? Um, yeah, so the, ben, the the Bender family. The Bender family operated in the 1800s in Kansas, killed around 11 people, supposedly, probably more, and it sounded like they had a pretty decent method worked out. Like, and, and like the, te- the family in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, like, the, like I said, the family that kills together stays together, I guess, or I don't know. Either way. Uh, so like I said, this is the first podcast of the month of Halloween, at least the first copy and contemplation of the month of Halloween, the month of October, excuse me. <laughs> uh, but I am stoked. I'm going to do a litany of uh, horror movies, talk about some of my favorite horror movies this month, uh, probably talk about some more serial killers and just really whatever else. I also want to talk touch on a little other thing I found this week, um, which was kind of creepy to me. It was. It seemed sinister in nature and just all around not all right. And it was about China being accused of harvesting tens of thousands of organs from people that they have like detained, like religious minorities. Look into it. I might talk about it on the next episode too. Maybe not. Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, they're being accused. Like the government of China is being accused of of harvesting organs. From, from religious minorities that they've like persecuted or imprisoned, basically, it's it's insane. Or people that have died, uh, like in like prison or or internment. It's fucking nuts. China's getting away with some crazy shit. They just celebrated 70 years of communism in the fucking country, while Hong Kong is 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 finally breaking out in violent protests. Like it's not all right. Man, shit's going crazy over there while they're becoming a massive supreme power. And the president of the United States just tried to solicit foreign aid from their government to investigate a political rival like he's already being impeached for. It's fucking insane. China's insane. Either way, have a great October. I'll be recording more podcasts. You go out there and use your brain for good because every day is a good day to rack up enough of those coconuts, kids. And what do we say here on Coffee and Contemplation? Keep your stick on the ice. Cool.